Have you ever set up your workspace to perfection only to have it disappear the next time you open a shot? Well, this video is for you because in today's video, we're gonna be learning how to set up your workspace in an optimal way and also saving it. So whether you're opening up a brand new shot or if you're opening up a shot from, let's say a layout person. Um, so if you're working in a studio, you usually like open a layout person's shot and you animate in that. What I'm gonna show you today, it saves your workspace, whether it's a new file or if it's someone else's shot. So this was a huge deal for me when uh, I first started working in Blender. I'll be honest, up until recently, <laughs> up until recently, I didn't know how to do this, but I recently a few months ago, um, where I would constantly just keep remaking my workspace. Every time I open a new shot from layout, I'm using the same 10 things. So I'd be moving this here, I'd be changing this to that, and it's just over and over and over. And you know, if you appreciate me suffering through all that stuff to teach you guys so you don't have to, Make sure to smash that like button and if you do have the time, I, I do have a survey I would like you guys to fill. It, it shouldn't take more than two minutes of your time and I would really, really appreciate it. So with all that out of the way, let's hop in. Okay, so step one is to obviously open up Blender. Make sure it's a brand new Blender, like it's just a fresh file that you just opened. Um, and it's not an old shot that you were working on. So step two is of course setting it up. This is what I usually do every single time when I open a file. So I'll just go through that with you guys. You don't have to do exactly what I do, but this works best for me. So, you know, you can use it if you like, but you don't have to. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to animation. I am going to delete this little cube right here. I'm going to go up here to the little camera picture, go down to simplify, drag it down, or click the downwards arrow here, and bring max subdivision on the viewport, just on the viewport, to zero. And I'm gonna leave it at six on the render. So what this does is that it reduces, as it says, the amount of subdivisions you see in the viewport, which uh, makes your file faster but when you're rendering, it renders the full six. And then once you're done that, you just press check. And so now that's applied, the simplify is applied. Uh, you could obviously check it and then bring it down, but if you have a full scene, this is for when you have a full scene. If you have a full scene and you have to do this, pressing this first, then bringing it down, it's just a slower process because it'll be doing it live instead of just applying it. So next up, we're gonna bring up the timeline, which is down here. Make sure to click auto key if that's how you roll. I didn't used to roll this way until I moved to Blender, but it's just, I don't know, it's, it's how I roll now. So bring up the uh, timeline. Next, we're gonna go to playback, audio scrubbing, and then change no sync to AV sync. And so now when we scrub, we'll be able to hear our voice clip. Next up, we're gonna click on keying. Go to the search bar, type in hole, and we're going to click whole character selected bones only. So now when we press I to set a key, it just sets a key on the selected curves. And so it's just one less process because otherwise you would have to click I and then click another option as well. It's just making our process faster. So next up to the graph editor, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Go here and change this to the graph editor. We're gonna go to view and we're gonna check off show group colors because we want it to be as close to Maya as possible and group colors just look a little too funky for me. And then we're gonna go up here and check on only selected curves. So now it would only show us the curves that we would have selected. Next, we're gonna click on normalize and we're gonna make sure that this check button is blue. And we're pretty much done with the graph editor now. We're gonna go to the outline over here. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit and I'm gonna go to this little funnel picture and turn on uh, both the selectable icon and the monitor so the selectable icon allows you to for example this camera is selectable right now if i click this now i won't be able to select this so this could be helpful when you're animating something and you want you don't want to touch something else you can just turn off the selectability and um, if you want your scene to be faster you can click the monitor to pretty much hide that from the scene and make your scene a little bit faster the eye I, i've noticed the eye icon doesn't actually do what you want it to do like you won't be able to see it but um, it'll still be there in the scene slowing down your scene so that's why we have the monitor and that's that with the outliner 
Now, um, next thing I go and do is go up here beside uh, global. I'm clicking on the two little circles and I'm changing this to individual origins. Now, what this does is when you, um, let's say you select two controllers and you try to rotate them, this will rotate both of them at the same time. Otherwise, it would just rotate the one in the front or the one in the back, or it, it wouldn't be doing what you want it to be doing essentially. So we're gonna go with individual origins, go to our camera view, I'm pressing N here, and let's make sure that our clip start is at 0 0.01. Looks good to me. And all right, cool, that's it, right? All right, let's open up a new blender and oh, you know what, let's save this. Let's save this. All right, let's save this and let's open a new one. So let's open a new blender and wait, where's our setup? What's going on? This is off. Simplify is off. None of this stuff is selected. What the hell is going on? Well, we got to save our setup. guys. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is going to go to edit preferences and here we're going to uncheck load UI. And so again, what this does is it will not load the UI of someone else who had opened the shot, it won't pull their UI and it'll, once we save this, it'll refer back to your saved setup. So we're unchecking UI. We're gonna go ahead and save preferences here. Close this, go to file, defaults, and save startup file. Are you sure you wanna do this? Yes, let's save startup file. And so now we should be safe. So let me close this, open this back up again, and boom, we have simplify on, we have um, audio scrubbing, the king's on whole set, and even this is set to individual origins. So everything that, and you know, auto key is on. So everything that we did was now saved. The box isn't there anymore. So now every time we open our blender, we'll have this exact same setup in animation. All right, so that's about it for this video. Uh, it was a little bit of a quick one, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helps you. And uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure to smash that like button, hit the sub button, stay notified of future videos because I think 80% of you guys aren't subscribed. Now, with a thank you to my beautiful Patreons, I am going to say goodbye <laughs> and happy animating. I'll see you guys in the next video.